Hey folks, welcome to part 17 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. Our first question is going to be, how does the union feature in Tableau help in data preparation? It merges rows from multiple tables. It merges columns from multiple tables. It blends data from multiple sources, or it only displays rows that coincide between multiple tables. Which of these is it going to be? For this, we're going to reference the Tableau documentation, which talks about unioning your data and exactly how you arrive at the screen where you can actually implement the union would be in the data source tab. So if I head on over to Tableau over here and I go to a uh, data source and uh, once you're connected to a data source, you will find down here, there's an option to add a new union. And once you drag that over here, you're able to add your, uh, your data sets essentially. Um, but yeah, going back to the Tableau documentation here, what exactly is a union? So uh, the best way to kind of demonstrate this is through this visualization that we have here. So think of it like this. So you have three different tables, right? Uh, which is basically uh, purchases by customer. So you have your May results over here. You have your June results. You have your July results. Essentially three different tables, but notice you have the same column structure and same data structure. So each of these three different tables has a day, it has a customer, it has purchases, and it has a type. So with the union, what you're able to do is consolidate three of these tables into one by essentially stacking them on top of one another. So all a union uh, essentially is, is stacking different tables together, given that they are structured the same way. And part of that condition is, first of all, they do have to have the same number of columns and frankly, the same uh, naming convention. So all of these columns would have to be named the same way, they would have to be the same data type, and only then can you kind of uh, consolidate or stack these together, right? Because the day, as you can see here, has to be numeric. The customer has to be uh, a string field, essentially. So those are just some of the conditions to, to look out for, uh, but that's essentially what a union is. So what are we doing here by implementing a union? Is it merging rows from multiple tables? Yes, right, because you have three rows over here, three over here, three over here, and you're merging the number of rows. You're essentially increasing the number of rows, but you're not increasing the number of columns because they all have the same four columns. So the first option here probably will be the correct solution. Let's, let's go through these other options. So does it merge the columns from multiple tables? It does not. We're not combining the two tables in such a way or, you know, the multiple tables in such a way that it would increase the number of columns or merge the columns together. In that uh, in that scenario, you would typically want to use a join because that's essentially what a join accomplishes. Third option, it blends data from multiple sources. Again, this is more of more synonymous with a join, but when you're working with multiple data sources and you're not able to join the data directly, but that does impact the uh, columns being merged together as opposed to the row. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. Last option, it only displays rows that coincide between multiple tables. That's not correct because um, with a union, it's gonna, it's gonna combine those records regardless. Coinciding uh, data is not one of the criteria that it looks at. So the only viable solution here will be the first option. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question. How can Viz in Tooltip feature enhance a Tableau dashboard? By providing additional context on hover, by speeding up dashboard performance, by reducing the need for extra sheets, or by launching a wizard to help you create tooltips. Which of these is it going to be? For this, we're gonna dive again into Tableau. I did have a visualization open here, such as this. So what is Viz in Tooltip? It's basically, once you have a visualization, a worksheet uh, to be specific, and of course you can have uh, a worksheet within a dashboard, you can actually, as part of the tooltip, have um, basically another visualization, another worksheet embedded within that tooltip, and you can further make it dynamic in that, uh, look at how we're looking at furniture and office supplies and technology here. If I mouse over furniture, it's going to access this worksheet of subcategories, but it's also going to filter for furniture and that's what makes it dynamic because if I mouse over the next one, if I hover over office supplies, now we're looking at that same sheet, but it's filtering for the office supply category and now I can see the different subcategories 
associated with office supplies. So it's very intuitive yet interactive uh, in the same way. So that's what a viz and tooltip is. So what is that helping us accomplish? How is that enhancing a Tableau dashboard? Well, is it providing additional context on hover? Absolutely, because if I look at a view like this and all I see is furniture, office supplies, and technology. It doesn't give a whole lot of information, but I'm interested if I'm interested in seeing the subcategories as well without cluttering up uh, the existing worksheet, I can now mouse over and get some additional context as far as, hey, this is my furniture, but here's what the breakdown within furniture looks like uh, as far as subcategories are concerned. So definitely helps uh, by providing additional context on Hover. Does it speed up a dashboard performance? No, if anything, this is actually gonna make your visualization a little bit slower because at the end of the day, you're adding additional uh, objects, additional calculations, um, and ultimately it is going to slow down your dashboard. It's not gonna help the speed uh, whatsoever. Um, not that it's a bad thing, it certainly helps, right? It's, it's a balance. Do you want the extra features or do you want performance? Whatever the end goal is, you kind of have to make that decision accordingly. Third option, uh, by reducing the need for extra sheets. Remember, uh, again, where if you go into tooltip here, that's how this is configured. If I click on tooltip, it'll show you the sheet that uh, I configured over here. So that sheet name is sales by subcat. And as you can see, it's filtering all fields. So whatever I hover over, it's gonna filter based on that. So if I hover over furniture, it's passing that as a filter. In fact, we're gonna go right into the sales by subcat sheet so I could, I could show you uh, what's going on here. So that's essentially the sheet that we're pointing to. And notice in the filters, we have a tooltip filter, which means the filtering here is controlled by, uh, the, the category specifically as a filter is controlled by the tooltip setting. So that other parent sheet is essentially filtering this sheet based on the tooltip hover, if you will, if that makes sense. So again, going back to this, by reducing the need for extra sheets, guess what? We actually had to use an extra sheet to make that tooltip possible because at the end of the day, what you see here, right? These, uh, these bars, these little uh, subcategory bars, they are uh, existing within another worksheet. I mean, you could hide this if you wanted to, but at the end of the day, that worksheet still exists exists within the workbook. So by no means are you reducing the need for extra sheets. Maybe in the context of dashboards, like maybe instead of having uh, a, a subcategory uh, sheet and then a category sheet, you are reducing the amount of sheets you're displaying uh, within a dashboard, but you're not reducing the need for extra sheets. You're actually introducing additional sheets to make that feature possible. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. Last option, by launching a wizard to help create tooltips, that's just a distractor. Obviously, that's not the, the correct solution. The only correct solution here will be the first option. Next question, what does enabling highlighting in Tableau do? Does it color data points to emphasize differences? Does it filter out unselected data? Does it create a focus on relevant marks or does it modify data transparency? So again, let's see an example or demonstration of highlight. So we already have sales by cat over here, right? We have a bar chart. And let's say I also had another table that, that I could add over here, right? So I have this dashboard over here with my sales by cat sheet. And I also have a sales by category table, which I could, uh, I could bring in here. So let me do that. And what I wanna do is when I mouse over a particular category, I want the corresponding values here to be highlighted, right? That's what the highlight action is. Uh, so that we could better understand what the correct solution would be. So in order to uh, invoke that, or in, in order to configure that, we're gonna go to dashboard, then we're gonna go to actions, because we are working with a dashboard right now. And what we're wanting to, want to, and what we're going to want to do is add an action, specifically the highlight action. And once this window pops up, what do we want to do? What is the, sh what is the source sheet, right? Where do I want, what do I want to be able to dictate what needs to happen? That's gonna be the sales by cat sheet, right? Because this one, this one over here, I wanna be able to mouse over something, that's gonna be the source. And then the impact is gonna occur on the target sheet, which is gonna be the table sheet. So I'm gonna uncheck sales by cat from the target sheet. So basically what I'm saying, and I'm gonna click hover over here. When I hover over the sales by cat sheet, I want you to update the target sheet, the sales, this table here essentially, accordingly. And what do, what do I want you to highlight? Well, I only want you to highlight category. The only reason you see 
category here is because that's uh, essentially the uh, the dimensions that we have here, right? Those are the only options available. If I had subcategory here, you would see subcategory here as well. But because this sheet only has category, that's what we're able to pass to this target sheet. So I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna click OK again. And now you'll notice if I mouse over furniture, for example, and just give it a second. Again, it's gonna be slower because we have the vision tool tip and whatnot, but you'll notice it highlights furniture. If you play if you, if you pay closer attention, you, you'll notice the actual values, the 20,000, 37, the 79,000. Those are still black fonts. They're just highlighted with a yellow. If you look at the other categories, however, the office supplies or technology, they almost seem grayed out. Like it's, it's a very less apparent color as far as the measures or the values are concerned. So what is that doing, right? Is it coloring data points to emphasize differences? No, because first of all, we're not working with differences. If I wanted to work with differences, I would actually go into the sheet and based on maybe the measure, right? I would, I would color accordingly. And now you'd have this color scale that would be able to identify the differences based on the intensity. So the higher number would be dark, the lower number would be less, uh, less apparent, but that's not what's happening here, right? Again, we'd use color for something like that. Uh, is it filtering out unselected data? No, let me undo that, go back here. Uh, when I mouse over something, is it filtering anything out? No, it's not, because if it was, um, anything that I hover over, the other categories would simply not even be shown here, but I could still see them. They just appear to be less focused or a little bit dim, if you will. So that can't be the correct solution. Last option, it creates a focus on relevant marks. Yes, that's exactly what it's doing. If I click on office supplies, those relevant marks are now highlighted. We're able to focus on those because A, it's highlighted, but B, the font color is still what it should be, as opposed to the others, like I said, they're, they're gonna be more, uh, more of a dimmer sort of color. So the third option here is going to be the correct solution. Last option, it modifies data transparency. Um, again, that's just a distractor because we're not working with data in any aspect that would make it more or less transparent. In fact, that's not even an actual term as it relates to Tableau. So again, that's just a distractor. Next question, this icon here on the right over here, best describes which component in the data pane. Is it going to be a left join? Is it going to be a set? a location or a hierarchy. For this, uh, let's just go through these one by one. So if it was a left join, it actually wouldn't look like that icon. For a left join, you would see basically a Venn diagram. Anytime you're working with an actual join, it's gonna be, first of all, in the physical layer, but when, it, when I drag another table here, you'll see a Venn diagram in the middle, and that's a dead giveaway of an actual join. Now specifically, what, how do you differentiate between a left or an inner or outer or, or right join is how that Venn diagram is colored. So you're gonna want the left circle, as soon as this loads, you'll be able to see, but you're gonna want that left circle to be completely filled in for it to be a left join. So again, right there. So that left circle, if that's fully colored, um, that's essentially the identifier for a left join. That's not what we see in this image though, so that can't be the correct solution. Next option is sets. Uh, let's go back into one of our sheets as soon as this loads and let's look at an example of a set. So if I wanted to create a set based on, um, I don't know, maybe like a particular subcategory, right? So I can create, I can create a set and um, maybe based on like the top, uh, top 10 sum of sales, for example, right? That's gonna create a set, and we already have some existing ones there. What does that look like? Again, it's gonna look like a couple circles essentially, but it certainly doesn't look like this image over here. How about location, right? And I'm sure a lot of you might think that's the correct solution, and that's because within this default uh, workbook, the sample superstore, you'll, no you'll notice the, uh, this, I this item over here is called location but this is not an identifier of location. In fact, it is an identifier of hierarchy. It just so happens that all of these different components within you know, the geographic uh, data that's available, it rolls up to a hierarchy that was called location, but you could always rename this to geography or, or what have you. But again, if I wanted to create um, maybe a different sort of hierarchy using maybe maybe customer name, I can right click customer name, go to hierarchy. I can either add to an existing hierarchy or create a new hierarchy and name this my customer hierarchy. 
and now I will have a customer hierarchy because that's what I named it. But that icon over there, over here, it represents hierarchy. That's what we're working with is basically like a parent-child relationship. And now if I add any kind of subsequent information to here, that's gonna be uh, the taxonomy, right? So it's gonna go top down. So the highest level would be customer name and then it would drill into, uh, into category. We could demonstrate that over here. It's just gonna be very slow because we're gonna have a lot of customer names. But now that we have a hierarchy, I can open this up and now it's gonna be customer name then category, right? So just to kind of demonstrate. But overall, this icon, it only represents hierarchy, not location. So that's gonna be the correct solution. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. As always be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course as always I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.